on this beautiful Sunday night, we are coming to you live from our Nile Serena studios. This is Perspective with Josephine Karunji. A very good evening and a warm welcome to the program. Thank you for joining us. Now this Sunday, what kind of businesses do women in Uganda favor? Are they working for them? How did the success stories work out? Tonight we speak to the women in business and we also find out from URSB, um, well, they're going to give us some information on how we can register our businesses if it is necessary, but you might be missing out uh, on if your business is not registered or well, well, yet they're still yet to convince some of us of if we should register these businesses. But before we begin the show, let's set the stage. We reached out to uh, the Uganda Bureau of Statistics to get a picture of the state of our businesses. And this is some of the information they shared with us. And that information will be running on the screen as I read it out from, from my documents. The available information dates back to 2010-2011. It it's extracted from the UBO census of business establishment that was undertaken at that time. It is about eight years old and therefore an indicative figure of what was happening in the businesses at that point in time. So let's have those figures running on the screen. Um, from the survey, we found out that the top 10 common businesses owned by women then were in the fields of trade, accommodation, hairdressing, manufacturing, and services. So these include wholesale shops, groceries, hotels, boutiques, cosmetic shops, uh, hotels, lodges, rental houses, wines and spirits companies, juice making companies, dairy products and outdoor advertising among other things. We also found out uh, that the total businesses at that time were 485,106 and of these 208,102 were owned by women. That's a percentage of 45.4. Of these, all of the, that figure of 485,106, 2,042 medium and large businesses were formal, giving a percentage of 0 0.98. So that means in about, what, 2011, 2010, 2011, only about 0.98% businesses were registered. Well, that, should, that information should allow us to get a quick start into our show for today and let me welcome my guests for this evening. I'll, I'll start with the lady in red, uh, Florence Seboa Kasule. You have quite a, quite a CV, so I'll, I'll start with you because it's pretty <laughs> elaborate. Florence is the current Executive Director of Seeds and Tools Uganda Limited. She is also the current chairperson of the Network of African Business Women Uganda Chapter and also the chairperson of Women Advance Africa platform, which brings together women in business, women in finance, and women in media in Uganda. Both of these entities are affiliates of the Gaka Michelle Trust of South Africa, whose objectives are to support women's economic and social empowerment through access to markets, finance, and business information while profiling their businesses through the media. And what I must not forget, she is also a commissioner in the Ministry of Trade and Cooperatives of Buganda Kingdom. Welcome, Florence. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome, Josephine. All right. And right next to Florence, uh, we have Patricia Opoka, who is the Senior Registration Officer at URSB, Uganda Registration Services Bureau. Welcome, Patricia. Thank you. And well, right next to me, um, we have Mrs. Yunia Kamia, who is the owner of Unique Bridal and Unique Hotel. Welcome. Thank you. Well, let's say it as it is. Welcome once again to the program. Now, we were speaking earlier, and Patricia, you told me the estimate of our population right now is at about 40 million. Yes. And we know the percentage of women is slightly higher than that of men. So we're looking at about, what, 25 million? 25 million, yes. Okay, women. so of the 25 million, about how many women do you think are involved in business? I could say about 10 million women. About 10 million women. Yes. Where are the rest of the women? Why do you think that it's a... Uh, more difficult for them to get involved in business? Why do you think that women shy away from, from it? I think uh, <coughs> to women, business uh, initially was a men's uh, area. Most women were engaged in agriculture, 
and out of school, those who completed school, by the way, would uh, uh, look for white collar jobs. So engaging in business, women used to think is for men, it's risky and very, very time consuming, given their roles. In the home. In the home, uh, looking after the family. Uh, as uh, women were being brought up, they are brought up to, to, to understand that they are, the, in the home, they have to, they are caregivers and caretakers for children, for the husbands, for the elderly, for the sick. So given the time element, women uh, are just coming up with business right with now. business ideas. Mm -hmm. well, one of the other things that, that, okay, some of the other reasons that we've gotten was that the lack of financial funding. So how do they get the capital to start these businesses? Um, the lack of training, the fear, and you mentioned, you mentioned the risk. Uh, social culture restrictions, they have no drive and they have no confidence to do these things. How do we deal with that and get more women doing business? I think it's very, very unfair to generalize because uh, my, my background may be different from hers. Her parents could support her. Maybe hers may not be able to support her to start a business. Even the education background also affects a woman's participation in business. <coughs> that means literacy and numeracy because a, a woman wants to limit the risks in her life. Women have been very, very calculative in what they want to do. And they would be very happy to see it growing slowly by slowly. As you, you grow your baby, yeah. it's what you want to see your business grow. Such that if there is a hurdle in that business, we are very, very timid. We feel we are going to be embarrassed. Two, we fear taking risks. You talked of capital. Men can take a risk and borrow very, very fast. But for us, we take calculative moves to generate the first income, to the first uh, money to put in your business. Yeah. You don't want to lose that little money. If maybe you got it from a friend, from a parent, and if you want to pay it back, so you have to be very calculative. And remember, with the roles I mentioned, the roles come with financial obligations. So you may find that the money you borrowed to put in a business, now somebody has fallen sick at home, the husband is not around, you may have to pick some little money and take the child to hospital. Okay. Putting it back may be too difficult. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Yunia, you, you own a business, Unique yes, Bridal do. and Unique Hotel. Yes. What was it like starting out for you? How did you start out? Um, now I start with Unique Bridles. Of course, Unique Bridles is a very big business with its brand. First of all, had passion. Just feel, hope you're married. Are you? Well, it will. Let's go to, to, to <laughs> how you started <laughs> <the> business. <laughs> yes, now, you know, when it comes like to a bridal shop, it is in wedding attires, mm. wedding clothes, you wedding gowns. You want to give me a wedding dress? No. Are <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. you? <Okay. laughs> And everyone, woman's dream is to have a wedding. And a wedding comes with a very beautiful gown. Now, we women, we love very beautiful things, especially on that big day. It's once in a lifetime day, hopefully. Now, when I was, when I was having my wedding, I found it very hard to get what I really wanted to put on. I ended up going to Dubai just to purchase one wedding gown. But the moment I had that gown, all my bridesmaids who are in the queue of getting married ended up hiring it from me. So that brought a very big idea in my head. I was like, yes, maybe I need to make a bridal show. There is demand. I was thinking big, though I started with a small shop. But because my idea was so big to make sure that at least this problem of having a dream gown, a dream wedding, uh, dream changing dress, maids attires. So I ended up making it big going to different countries to import. I import about from about 10 countries when I make. You import from about, so you can afford to, how did you start out? Where your capital, for example, because I know it's one of the things that make it difficult for a lot of women to start. Yes. To be able to get the finances to support yourself from the beginning. 
lucky enough, my husband was very supportive. Okay. He gave me the startup capital. Not only the startup capital, you know, with business, especially when we are paying rent. Yeah. Kampala rent is very expensive. Our landlords keep on adding rent every month, every month. So I had a very supportive husband who would always support me at any time when it comes to taxes, stocking, paying stuff. Because for the first four years, the business was so low. You have to introduce the product to the people, the costs, the cost of operating the business. It took me about six years to break even, though now the business is doing very well. And I think I can credit this to my husband. He was very supportive from day one up to today. Okay. And I would urge all men at least to support their spouses. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh, Florence, you're, you're yeah. nodding, you're yeah. clearly yeah. in agreement. Mm. <laughs> Yes, I am, because if women are to succeed in business, if you're married, family involvement is very, very important, very crucial, not only for financial support, but also for guidance, and also being there for you to run the business, including the children, and also for sustainability. In case you're not there, they will be there for you to do it, to carry it on, not to sell it off. Okay. I like her husband, Thank Congratulations, you. and please send our <laughs> greetings to him. Thank you. Very Surprising. few men can office. do that. He's a police officer. He's a police officer. This yeah. interview is about to run away from me. <laughs> <laughs> Florence, you own businesses as well, right? Yes. So how did you start up? Me, uh, initially, uh, most of my life I've been uh, uh, employed. Okay. So I start, I've done several businesses but as side, side businesses to generate some little additional income. And my job would support the capital. Okay. That was my, my, where I would get my money. But later on, uh, as I, my children grew up, I, um, the, my, first, my, my daughter wanted to start business after her age six. So we didn't uh, have the money, we had to borrow. So she, we started with a small loan and put up a small restaurant in Wande Gear. When she went to invest and completed, we started the boutique. But from I used my NSSF savings. Okay. In my compound, I constructed the, the saloon and the boutique, and the boys took on the game center. Oh, wow. So I tried to run away from, uh, from uh, paying rent. Are these businesses all registered? Are they yeah, formalized? Yes, and uh, fortunately, she registered my first uh, business. I met her here today. Did you remember her? I was uh, <laughs> trying to find out. Then I saw, mm, she's the one who encouraged me to register. She really helped me because we are just juggling. We didn't know how to go about it. She helped us a lot. About how far back did you register? Was it 2014? 2016. 2016. 2016. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, are your businesses registered, Junior? Yes, they are. When did you register? I think 2013. 2013. Yes. So when you started out, what you hadn't registered them? Yes. What made you decide to register? Yeah. You know, after starting a business, you get more serious along the way. You're like, yes, I'm making a brand. I need to own this brand in my hands. How will I own a brand when it's not registered? Any other person can come up and take up your name. You can only own that name after registering it up. So when Unique Bridles is not registered, that means it's not mine. Maybe I'm working for another person. But after registering, making it formal, formalizing it, it makes me 100% the owner of Unique Bridles and no one else can take up the name. Okay. Well, you're, you're here, Patricia, so let me, let me ask you, and you've been quiet up mm -hmm. to this point. What does it take to register to formalize my business? Uh, to formalize your business, you, are, you can register a business name, which is um, a two-page form. You provide the name, we'll search in our database. So I, I get this form from you, I yes. come to, to yes, your Yes, you come offices. to any of our offices. Okay. Uh, we have offices uh, at our head office at George Street, at Georgian House. Mm -hmm. We have offices in Gulu, in Arua, in Mbale, and um, Barara. So you go to any of our offices, and then you get the form, you fill it in, you will search whether the name is available. Uh, she's actually lucky. There are people who operate their businesses. You come to register, we tell the name is not available. Y so she waited five years. 
to she was come. lucky because you were you were operating for five years before you registered. And that's very true. Okay. okay. Yeah. So um, if it's a business name, um, you'll pay twenty four thousand in the bank. Um, you will give us a copy of identification, and then we will just and give you a certificate of registration. That's it. Yeah, that's for a business name. So if you want a company, a company has uh, more steps. The first step is to reserve your name. Uh, it's that reservation is valid for thirty days, and then you'll prepare your books, your memorandum and articles. Uh, your memorandum has uh, objectives of what you're going to do. And the beauty of the current uh, Companies Act we're operating allows you to do anything that is legal. So you can have the people who register businesses and they have very many objectives. So at any one point you might change, hmm, depending on so how. So I can, I can register and I can do stationery, I can yes. get into mining, I can... There, can there are certain things like mining which require you to get a license. Uh -huh. Yeah, there are certain specific industries where you don't just venture into without mm. getting additional licenses and then um, you'll have your your books ready their forms you attach and then you will register you pay stamp duty and registration fees and now we have single member companies uh, back in the day people were afraid to have a uh, register company because it required you to be more than one yeah. person so right now you can have a one-man company and you do your business Florence is still nodding uh, Flor like she has benefited combat. I've uh, I really benefited because uh, she guided me. Before registering, I was also operating informally. But uh, time came when uh, these uh, people of uh, KCCA passed by and they <laughs> asked about these issues. So fortunately, they were not very rough. And that is when we woke up and said, mm -mm, we must legalize. and. Uh, to make it worse, I'd been training people to register, and for me, I'd not registered. So I said, no, 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 I must live by example. And since then, I've uh, convinced many, many people to register their businesses, whether individually or as companies. It really works. What's, what's been different for you since registering? Confidence. You open the door without, I mean, knowing very well nobody's going to stop you. Just put the registration and the certificate up there. Whoever passes, you just show him and you continue. Without registering, apart from uh, that confidence, you cannot uh, expand. We are promoting, uh, as a network of African business women, we want women to grow. She's growing and she has grown. She has started tapping the international uh, Markets. businesses. And this is where we want other women, young and old, to go. We're encouraging that. And uh, uh, as uh, the network, we work with women from different countries in Africa and would like to network the young women. If you want to go to Nigeria, you, 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 may, you may not know anybody there. We have contacts already, Ghana, any country in Africa. So it, if you, ca you are not registered, nobody will take you serious. Okay. Yes. Well, let's carry on with that conversation uh, right after this short break. Welcome back. We are coming to you from the Kampala Serena Conference Center, Nile Room, and we are talking about formalization of your business. So, well, Patricia, is it the same for people who are up country, for example? You mentioned Arua, you mentioned Kulu. Where else did you mention? Mbara and Bali. And what of the rest of the districts? Now, those, those are regional offices. Okay. We usually have outreach programs where the the year our, uh, my colleagues go out to meet people. We work closely with the district commercial officers. So if they have a group of people who need us to go there, we can we go and carry out on-spot registration. We can also sensitize them. We have radio talk shows and all. Okay. Yes. One of the things that, uh, and we were talking about it earlier, was the businesses that we operate in, our, in the boots of our car or in our homes like Florence, and you never really think that maybe I should register it. Well, Florence set up structures that KCCA could come and visit. Mm -hmm. But in the boot of my car, how many times does KCCA pass by and say, open your boot and let's see there's a business happening in there? What is it necessary for somebody yes. who is conducting businesses from their car to register? Yes, everyone should register. Uh, that business you're operating in your boot, you can register a business name. The cost is 24000 And now with social media and all these platforms, you might have your business registered and you, you, you trade. People will know that business, but you might not know that person. But right now, if you're operating in your boot, you're restricted. 
it's only those who know you, references and all. So you can't go out there. Okay. Because probably you work and prob it, uh, it might cause, uh, you, w you don't want your employers to know that you're running a business besides you're cheating on their time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you register your business, you can even have, you can operate it, you have someone who's doing it for you, and eventually you'll get out of that boot and set up somewhere. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Florence. Yes, I know. She's emphasizing uh, registration, I think, uh, because it's her business. <laughs> but then, uh, like the URSB, to go a step ahead for young women who are coming on board, and not only women, but also young men, because we, we don't want to leave the boys behind. Yeah. Given the current situation, there are no more office jobs. Whoever comes out of the university or a college, the fallback position is business. But how many do know the stages, I mean, uh, the procedure? So a lot of work needs to be done. Sensitization. Mm. Well, awareness creation. Yeah. And not only for registration. If you register my business, how, first of all, she said, somebody can cheat, steal your name. This issue of coming up with a business innovation, business idea, should also come along. People need capacity building in many things. Uh, before you even register my business, help me to understand the business environment. So you, you are a BS, should work with other, other organizations, not just run to the district and say we are registering businesses. Okay, are you working with other We're working with other organizations, oh. we're working with the universities, okay. we're working with MOOCs in particular, mm. and then we're also other agencies. We, in the last two years, we worked with uh, USAID, USAID Project, the Feed the Future. Uh, we have uh, uh, sensitization clinics, we operate, we get women, youth, Ministry of Gender, yes, uh, women organizations. Uh, schools, so we are trying to get out there. That's very good. Yes. When, That's when very you say good. you're working with them, what, what does this mean? Mm. Now, when we, when we work with them, they have the people. Like now, Ministry of Gender has youth and women. So we organize sensitization drives, we meet them, we discuss, they give us feedback, their challenges, and we see the way forward on how to help them c create businesses and also they, they benefit from the government programs available. Okay. Yes. What happens? Okay. Yes, right. I think more needs to be done. I thank URSB for networking with other entities, and I'm happy they sensitized us, including during the shows. They are there, mm. but th we are leaving behind a huge number of people who need your services. I really don't know how we are going to tap it. We are concentrating in municipalities, but there are people who are not in municipalities. I'm traveling from my village, coming to Mbale and register, then uh, I have to look for money. I don't have a job, you know. I don't know how we are going to help the young generation. And if the only way to go is to go into business right now. That is why I'm saying there's more that, that needs to be done, not only with the, the, those ones, but also with the finance institutions as you register, mm. you should also help the young men and women to see how they can access finance. I may be having a business idea, uh, uh, her gown, has an probably her husband will help her to go to Dubai and buy. But mm. somebody may be having a very big business idea, comes with 24 registers, but then to start, <coughs> the capital to start, there should also be a link to the banks. I hope you're also working with the banks banking institutions yeah. so that they can help them to get the finance literacy before they even give them the money. So and it should be a network. Th there was a, a, mm. an article that came out, um, I don't remember when, about I think a year ago or so, mm -hmm. about how Ugandans are the most entrepreneurial people in the world, but then we start businesses and the businesses mm. die within mm. what? Within One a couple, mm. you the know, first yeah. path, but yeah. then so I start my business, I'm excited and I register exactly what she's saying, mm. but then there's no, I can't sustain it. I don't mm. have the education, mm. I don't have the funding, I, mm. you know, and it's dead, but mm. it's registered. What's the point? Okay, mm. so to cure that, right now we're working on setting up a collateral registry 
where we'll be able to access loans with our immovable property. Previously, you need to have a title, you have to have land and all fixed assets. Mm -hmm. Now with this registry, I can be able to use my phone, I might be able to use my crops, my, you know, anything, immovable. That so will if be I want this information, where do I go to get it? As soon as that uh, registry is launched, oh, it's we shall, okay. it's not yet launched, it's work in progress, probably at the end of this year, we shall be able to, before, we're going to be in the sensitization and people will be able to know. We want everyone to access credit. Everyone in Uganda has a phone, mobile phone. So with that phone, you can stake it and then you'll be able to get some capital to, to start, start your you business. True. Yes. Okay. And then also, we are, we're not only in the urban areas, we're also, there's a tax register expansion program currently in 39 municipalities. And the plan is by 2020, we should be in every district so that people no longer have to travel uh, long distances to come to the city or to the main to do that. Give them transport refund. No, okay, exactly. exactly. <laughs> um, what are the opportunities out there? What, what, what work started working out for you after you registered your business? What did you notice that what was really, really different? Of course, you look more serious. As long as the business is registered, you look more serious. Of course, we have colleagues who have unregistered businesses, but at the end of the day, when you compare your business to their businesses, you are far ahead. I'm happy with you can register in URSB. One, these days you can't pay a trading license when you're not registered. It's a must. They have two tables. One is for Kampala Capital Store Authority, another one is for URSB. They first send you to their table. Is it that true? Yes. It's a must. True. First of all, you go to their table, you get a trading name, they register your name, afterwards you pay the city council. And that's every beginning of year in Jan, meaning every January they register more than 100 businesses. Hope it's true. Yes, it's true. You seem to have all the information, Yunya. Mm -hmm. Yes, because I'm a business lady. You're a business lady and yes. you've really gone all out. Yes, and the business is doing well. It's a success success. That is her business. baby. Yeah. It's she her has baby. to <laughs> grow it and mm -hmm. ensure she'll become, uh, she'll trade all over Africa and the world. What happens if I don't register or if I don't, if my business is not formalized? Mm. What's um, the worst that can happen? Uh, the worst that can happen is when you die, your business will die. That will be the end of it. So if I'm living in the moment? Don't live in the moment. Because you have family, you have friends who look up to you, and you're setting up this, because you're putting in your time. By the time you set up a, a business, it's your passion. I don't think anyone sets up a business for something they really don't care about. For some, yes. it's necessity. It's not passion. Yes, necessity, you, with time, you'll nurture it and you'll enjoy it. So when you do that, you'll be able to create your brand. You can access credit. Now with the trans cross-border trade, you'll be able to trade across borders. Okay. You'll be able to access credit. Hmm? And you're, also, you're credible. You know when someone says, um, you know there are very many businesses. I had heard of Unique Bridles, but I didn't know the owner. Well, she's here. Yeah. You see? <laughs> you just, the brand sells itself. It speaks for, yeah. it opens the doors for you. Yes. Okay, well what else besides me? So if I have my business and it is not registered and maybe I pass on, does, mm. is it, it, you say it's dead? Yes. Nobody because can take it Unless someone on, right? decides to so what else? What else is, is, is what else should somebody else whose business is not registered now mm. know that would make them realize that maybe this is important? Um, I think to help her, mm -hmm. it's about business growth. Okay. We want we businesses to grow, not to die, the way she's saying. Actually, I would like also to appreciate you are a BS. You are a SP. <laughs> they've, they've done so a lot okay. of work. They have really done a lot of work. They've put up brochures different languages, although a lot of work still needs to be done, the yes. way I'm saying. But if we, you start a business with an objective of living with it and leaving it behind, the way I say different cultures like Indians leave it with their families. So even us, we should buy such a culture. If your business is to grow and sustain through thick and thin, it should start with that like giving your name, Josephine, or being nameless. So that one already sells you out. Yeah. Yes, you know, it, it gives you an identity. Your name gives you uh, a denomination, wherever you belong, and your cal uh, b beliefs could be your local name. So even a business is like that. Right. And also, 
apart from growth, you can tap other opportunities riding on that name. How? How do you tap into other opportunities? Um, the opportunities you might find there's a, a, a probably a grant okay. available to for those opportunities for business owners. So they'll ask you probably, um, you must have been in business for two years. Yes, you've been in business for 10 years, you are never formalized. You can't begin saying, I've been doing this. They'll say, where is your certificate? Okay. Yeah, so you might miss out on that. And then also you'll be able to create employment. We're crying about unemployment. So when you have your business, you'll employ people. You'll support families. Hmm? If it's formalized. Yes, because many people, no one wants to deal with someone who is not formalized because tomorrow you might Close just shop. Yes, yeah. you might decide to relocate. Mm. But if you have these people you're employing, mm. you're taking care of families, you'd mm. first think, what should I do? Hmm? Or probably you can even sell it to one of the people available because now they know you have created a foundation. Okay. Yes. All right, well, let's take another short break and we'll be right back. Welcome back. We are coming to you from the Kampala Serena Conference Center Nile Room and we are talking about the formalization of businesses. Well, ladies, uh, because our time is quickly running, before I, I let you go, what are those things that you've noticed because you're in business that you've seen that fail a lot of businesses? Junior, you've been very quiet. I want to pick mm -hmm. on you. Now, businesses, of course, capital. People lack capital to capitalize. Business has to be stocked, often the rent. Our landlords tend to make the rent so high, not everyone can afford that rent. Yeah. Three, competition. It's a competitive society. People are left out because of competition. And of course, many other things, knowledge, customer care, and some people tend to use business money for other purposes. Yes. As long as someone doesn't value the business money, like we young girls, we end up using all the money. We think the whole the money is profits. No, sometimes you need to, <laughs> <laughs> to add those profits in the businesses for them to grow. I think that's the reason why most businesses are collapsing. And actually, Florence, you, you mentioned um, that when you said that a lot of women take the, the money and use it for pass. So a child is sick and you, you, know, you need immediate money and you use it and take the child to school. Yes, yes, yes. It's very important for a lady or a business person to separate the family from business. Very, very important. And that one comes along with keeping proper records. Everything, even if it's a retail shop, at home, they don't have sugar, and you have to, to, to give them a, a kilo of sugar. You must record. So ki record keeping is very, very important. That is, uh, I wrap it up as business skills, capacity building. Very, very important for business people, young men and women. At the same time, separating family from the, from the business. Also, taking it as a profession. People who come to business, they think, let me try this, maybe as I look for a job. But I, I think, Yunia, you, you didn't look for a job. No. You went on straight, and it is now her profession, her job, her occupation, which okay. you put on her CV. So once God gives you that opportunity of doing a job, I mean doing business, do it as a profession. And also have patience, seek knowledge, and build your capacity. What is the attraction in informal business? Informal? Yeah. People, uh, I think the attraction is hiding away from paying taxes. That is my only thinking. But paying tax, if somebody understands well, it helps also to regularize your business. And for people to, to, to trust, to have more trust in you, okay. especially your employees. Once you're not there, the people, tax authorities will harass your employees and your business will close. So it's better to pay taxes, to be be better to become formal. That will help you to grow. I'm a, an advocate for cross-border trading now. Moving away from local business to regional to international. So unless you start being formal, professional, you cannot move. Okay. Well, um, what, what have you noticed when I'm sure you have the information on why a lot of people prefer to not come and formalize their businesses? 
What is the excuse? Most of them are afraid of paying taxes, it's actually. It's the same thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you always tell them it's not about paying taxes. Keep proper records, bookkeeping. Once the taxman comes and you show them, these are my books of accounts. They won't speculate. But if you don't uh, have any book, good bookkeeping uh, mechanisms available, you're not formalized, you're just there. You're, you're hiding. So come up, formalize your business, keep your books of accounts well, uh, your record keeping, keep everything in order, and no one will disturb you. Okay. Yes. What, what would you tell a young woman, Junior, that is trying to start up in business? What key principles have worked for you? One, financial discipline. As long as you have a financial discipline, your business will always grow day by day. What's financial discipline? Loving your money, not overspending it. You know, we young people, we tend to spend a lot, yet in business, you need to love your money, even if it's 1,000 shillings, have love for it. The moment you, you're financially disciplined, that means your capital will always be there. You'll not very, be very extravagant. You utilize your profits, and you see your business growing day by day, day by day. And on top of that, always love what you do. As long okay. as you love what you do, it will be automatic. The business will be a success. All right. What principles have worked for you? What would you tell um, a young woman that wants to, s to get into business? Passion, first. Passion, you must love what you want to do. Don't do it because uh, uh, Unia succeeded in, in uh, bridal. bridal. Then I'll also do it when you are just doing it for the sake of money. No, it will not work. Start by loving what you, are, you want to do and do it professionally. Doing it professionally means start put up a business plan from square one. Budget, make a budget, make a provision for expenditure and income and how you are going to do it. How you are going to get the money to support your business and how you are going to spend. And lastly, most importantly, keep records. Even if you are buying, uh, uh, don't spend anything that you have not budgeted for for the sake of buying. Women, we, are, we can see a nice shoe and say, mm -mm, let me take from business and buy this shoe. That one takes you back because you've not, you've, you didn't budget for that. So make your personal budget and uh, respect that budget. Okay. So those are your two key principles. Right. So uh, I'd like us to, to wrap this up and I'll, I'll start with you because uh, you've been very quiet, Patricia. <laughs> what would you like us to go home with concerning registration of our businesses? Okay. Um, for, in order for us to achieve a middle income uh, status by 2020, we'd encourage everyone, no business is too small, to formalize. Is that all that you'd like us to take home? Yes. No business is too, even the one in the boat? No business is too small not to be registered. Okay, great. So if I'm dealing in groundnuts and I'm selling them to the people in the office every tea time, Yes, no business because is too small. once you begin that business, you might start in polythene bags, you will eventually get a nice package, eventually you'll want to supply supermarkets and everything, so you can't super, uh, supply when it's in a certain form. Okay. You'll continue building your business. So I should look yes. ahead when yes. I am thinking of my business, not yeah. in... Not just today. The quick, quick money. Exactly. Okay. But well, a message maybe to you, RSB. Uh, for, the, for the young generation who are coming out of the institutions every year. My request is for them to organize more dialogues, open dialogues, not only go to mobs. There are others who are there who are stuck. They don't know how and where to go, how to start it, how to do it. They need help. So I would like to request URSB to put more money to tap the, that potential to create more jobs for the young generation. Okay. We shall do that. And that's to you, RSB, and, and to everybody else? Everybody else? Yeah. What are your thoughts on, your final thoughts, and what you'd like to share with us as we leave today on, on registration of our businesses? I'd uh, emphasize the importance of registering a business. It brands you, it, sh it profiles you, and it markets you. It also puts a lot of confidence, not only in yourself, but also the people you employ. 
they feel part and parcel of you. They feel, feel proud to work with Unia Fashions and uh, but what do unique you bridles. Unique, unique bridles. Yeah. Somebody would stand up and say, I'm very proud to work with unique bridles, but not Unia as a, an individual. So it profiles you, it sells you, not only here, locally, regionally, but you can also take you international levels. Okay. All right. And Unia? Of course, I'll agree with Madame Florence. As long as the business is registered, it makes you more serious. Even if it comes to your competitors, you know we are dealing in a very competitive society. We have competitors in business. And the only way to show them, yes, I'm on top of you. My business is registered. Some people see as if when you register business, it's as if like, you have a lot of money, which actually is not very <laughs> true, <laughs> because registration is just 24,000. Yes. So the moment you register your business, not only in us, even in financial institutions, when you go to the bank and you have a name which is registered, the bank takes you more serious. Okay. Account opening. You can't open an account when the business is not registered. Okay. So I would advise everyone who is in business to please always register your business as soon as now. As soon, don't wait five years. As soon as now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, thank you all very much. Thank you, Unia. Thank you, Florence. And thank you, for Patricia, for taking the time to come and speak with us about uh, formalization of our uh, businesses. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. And that was uh, our show for tonight. Thank you for watching. Coming up is NTV Weekend Edition.